Oh, look at what this bird did to my dinghy last night. All right, so try leaving the cover on at all times when not in use from now on. So hopefully that'll keep the birds from attempting to land in it. And if they do crap all over it, they'll crap all over the cover. And we'll see how that works. Blustery and cool, the September morning arrives as forecast. On the weather maps are rather brisk northwest winds, which is not an entirely fair wind. It means a close reach as I am headed back toward Casco Bay and back toward Brunswick. However, after sitting in Flanders Bay for four days now with next to no wind, and the only wind that uh, I had was from the southwest, so dead on the nose, I'm pretty much going to take anything that's uh, close to a fair wind. As, as I say, it's getting late in the season. It's time for me to get heading south. So we say goodbye to Bar Harbor. Just coming up on Stave Island here. On this brisk and blustery Thursday, September morning. Oh, this is hairy. Look, look at the gusts coming off this uh, Stave Island here. Uh, just a moment ago, I took a flying jibe on, a, on one of these. A sudden shift just completely caught me aback. Yeah, now we're about to hit the gusts on the other side here. So we're headed through Eastern Way here. Uh, I've gone down to the heavy weather jib, uh, which is certainly leaving us under canvas now, but these gusts are still too fierce. I put the reef staysail up and quickly took it down after getting hit by a couple of those gusts that just laid her down on her beam ends. It'll come forward and then clock out. Get out in the more open water, it's pretty much 25 knots solid. But then we get in between the islands and it gets very gusty. So there's no rest for the weary today. sailboat out here. Otherwise it's just me and the lobster boats. And the two-step continues. Get into open water. It howls. And then in between the islands it gets light and fickle.
It is Thursday, the 14th, the 15th of September, 2022, and uh, just cleared south of Ila Hawk here. Um, and uh, and we're, we're hitting this slop from the current on the other side. This is really slowing us down. And uh, the wind is also eased up, which I'm not complaining about. Um, because, uh, I mean, it, it's just been screaming all day here. So if, if this wind dies down to about 10 to 15, I won't complain a bit. And uh, go up and set the reef staysail instead of the heavy weather jib here. Um, but I want to wait for a little bit to see if uh, if this is actually going to calm down or we're just in another uh, light spot because it's been doing this all day especially in and around the islands it would kind of ease up for a bit and then you get around the islands and it would just come barreling in gusting 30 or so and uh, if I put the stays on then I'd be way over canvassed so anyway I haven't had anything to eat or drink all day because I've had to be on the helm trimming sail and, and, and navigating because we're, we're threading our way through all these islands. So we're out in a little more clear water now. So I'm going to try to um, try to get something to eat here. And then I'll, I'll think about maybe putting more sail up, you know, give it a little time. But it does feel like this is kind of easing up a bit. So we'll see. going to be an overnight sail at the least as we still have many miles to go back to Casco Bay. September. Whoa, you can see the steam rising from my coffee. It's cold. And uh, we're just passing Monhegan Island. Passing the lure to Monhegan Island. Um, leads us with about 20 miles or so to Cape Small. Um, has been yeah kind of west northwest so we've had a little bit of an angle but it's been pretty much a pretty much a cold miserable slog to windward I think after I'm done with breakfast I'm gonna lay her over on Port Tack we'll close the shore a bit and, uh, maybe get a little flatter water because yeah, we're we're kind of we're kind of really slamming into it here Um, so, yeah, the problem with going down east is getting back, because you tend to, uh, when the fronts go through, you get a northwest, that's what we got now, which is an okay wind, it's kind of a close reach getting home, but of course, inevitably, it comes west, northwest on you, you end up getting, if you stay on starboard tack, you end up getting further and further offshore, so then you, you gotta take a tack in, so you end up just tacking to windward. So, just get a cup of coffee and some breakfast, and I, I think I'm going to put her over on the other tack and see if we get a little closer to the shore. Wax off. Looks like I'm going to put a reef back in the stay, so it's getting a little too much wind again. I think this is about my uh, fifth or sixth cycle for this trip.
but I think it's time to give her a full stay so again. She's gonna need driving to get to Windward and it would be nice to get in before nightfall. We've rounded Cape Small. We're, we're heading into uh, Casco Bay here. Um, right now we're headed towards Small Point Harbor. Uh, I think I'm gonna try to get to Sebasco which is only about four miles from where we're at. Hopefully we can make it in before dark. Uh, but we got two complicating factors on that. One, as you can see, we're still close hull. A little bit of an angle, but it's still basically an upwind battle. But the worst part is, is that we're fighting this epic current. So we're fighting about a knot and a half current. And so that's really a 